This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data, and freedom to browse censored websites. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and welcome to my tour of what's on my late 2013 Apple Mac Pro. Now I like to do these tours from time to time, it gives you an idea to see what applications I use. And I thought it'd be really nice to do one on the late 2013 Mac Pro, which is a relatively new system to me, so that you get to see the applications I really use on a daily basis. And over time I install lots of applications and then some of them I might not use for a long time. So this is a real good opportunity just to share with you the main applications that I use. So you can see my desktop on your screen at the moment. And we start at the very top of my dock, which I have on the left hand side of my screen normally. And we've got the finder icon obviously at the very top. And then if I click Launchpad, this gives you an opportunity to see all of the applications that are installed on my Mac Pro that aren't necessarily in the dock. So I don't use all of these very often at all. You'll see things like uh, Intego Backup Express, which once I've set up the schedules for backup, I don't really launch that again. And then we've got things like Apple Motion, which again, don't use very often at all. And then we've got uh, Geekbench and Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which I used for uh, demonstrating the performance of the Mac Pro to you. And then if I just swipe to the right here, we've got things like Dropbox, the Adobe Application Manager, uh, Compressor, which works in the background for me. Again, I've got my preset set up in Compressor, and that's pretty much it. Or oh, one thing I didn't show you just up here, Geekbench 3, obviously the latest version. So let's get rid of Launchpad and then move down to the browsers. I've got two browsers installed at the moment. Safari, which I use as my secondary browser now. My primary browser is Google Chrome. It just seems to work a little bit better for me. I've got used to using it more. It synchronizes nicely across my different devices. So that's probably my primary browser at the moment. Then we've got Apple's Mail. Uh, this is what I use for my daily email. Uh, it's not fantastic though, I must say, in Mac OS X Mavericks, uh, in using that in combination with Gmail, it's just not quite there yet. So I have been trying other clients as well, but I keep coming back to Mail for some reason, because I don't find something else that I really trust as much. But uh, it's just not good. It's not good. Apple really need to address some of the sit situations. Some of the bugs in there are terrible. So TweetDeck is the application that I use for composing my tweets, uh, replying to tweets, uh, for direct messages on Twitter, scheduling tweets as well. You can see here I've got a scheduled tweet sort of panel and I've also got a notification panel as well which gives me a good idea of how people are interacting with me. The main home and mentions panels uh, go pretty frantic from time to time and it is hard to keep up with all the tweets but I do try and reply to as many as I can. So moving on, we've got address book or contacts in the dock here, which I use for managing my uh, addresses and telephone numbers. That synchronizes over nicely to my other iOS devices as well. We've also got calendar, which I use every single day. And again, making appointments in that, that synchronizes across to my other devices. It also synchronizes with Gmail, which is really good. We've also got notes and I use the notes application for making quick notes about videos because I can make them on the desktop and then if I need to refer to them whilst I'm recording a video they do synchronize across nicely to my iPad so I can then use my iPad normally out of shot when I'm recording a video and I've just got a few pointers if I need reminding of something I definitely want to cover whilst I'm recording. Then we've got FaceTime that shouldn't really be in the dock because I don't really use that at all. I use it occasionally on my iPhone so I'm going to drag that out of the dock and get rid of that completely. Then we've got iPhoto used for managing photos. I do still use that even though I've got Adobe Lightroom. I do use iPhoto for managing my Project OMD 365 photos for example and family photos as well. I mainly use Lightroom when I'm doing projects for companies. Uh, moving on we've got Pages. Pages is Apple's uh, sort of word processor, page layout application. I use it for sending out letters, also for creating invoices. And I've got on the screen here something that's not sort of uh, uh, sensitive information just to show you. This is one of the templates. It's very feature rich in the way it works. 
And when you open up a template in Pages, it gives you lots of placeholders so you can drag in your own pictures, replace the dummy text with your text. And it's just a really cool way and a very quick way of creating really nice looking documents. Moving on swiftly, we've got numbers. Now I can't show you numbers running because it contains sensitive information. It's spreadsheets that I use for business use. This is Apple's equivalent to Microsoft Excel. It works very well. I would say that the way I use it is in quite a simplified manner. I'm sure it can do a lot more than what I use it for. And then we've got iTunes for tunes. And then we've got the App Store for apps. Should we have a quick look? Let's have a quick look in the App Store. So the App Store, really, really good uh, for managing your updates and also for discovering and installing new applications as well. For those of you who haven't used a Mac before, uh, a lot of the apps nowadays are all installed via the App Store. Uh, obviously, the likes of the Adobe Suite, I subscribe to Adobe Creative Cloud, which we'll come on to in a moment, um, they're all actually installed via the App Store. Adobe is installed in a different way, and you still can get standalone installers, but my primary uh, source of software is the App Store. So and it's, it's really good. It works extremely well. Moving on, we have got Final Cut Pro. Now, this is what I use for all of my video editing. When Apple first updated Final Cut Pro to Final Cut Pro 10, uh, it was a big, big change. And even with the very latest version, they made some changes which threw me off balance for a little while, but I'm back on uh, sort of on an even keel with it. I've learned all of the new features. And we've got like a projects tab on the left here. If you can see my pointer moving around. And these are my templates. So I've got a Geekanoids video template for the main videos that I publish to the channel. I've got my vlog style videos, which is the project you can see open at the moment. And then I've got my headphone videos, gaming, uh, Hotspot Shield videos because I'm a Hotspot Shield ambassador. And also my intros, I've got those split up into a separate project as well. And then I can uh, go through various libraries and pull in footage that I've actually taken into Final Cut Pro from the memory card that comes out of my camera. So a very, very good application and extremely easy to use. Look, very, very good performance as well on the Mac Pro. So, so fast. That was fun. Let's quit out of that and move on. So we've next we've got Adobe Photoshop CC. Now I mentioned that I subscribe to Adobe Creative Cloud. I don't subscribe to the whole suite of applications. I just did the uh, very cheapest option which is Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. It costs around about eight pounds something a month, something like that, which I think is a good value because I use this every single day. And you also get an Adobe Manager up the top here where you can actually manage your uh, updates and the applications. The uh, thing that I subscribe to or the plan I subscribe to also includes Adobe Bridge, but I don't really use that. But Photoshop is fantastic. I don't run Photoshop on my MacBook Pro though. I run uh, Photoshop Elements, so not the full blown Photoshop. Uh, I might well install this on there as well because the license allows you to install it on a desktop and a laptop at the same time. So that's Photoshop. Moving on, we have got Adobe Lightroom sitting in the dock here. And then we've also got ScreenFlow. Now ScreenFlow is the application that I'm recording this video on. It allows you to capture both your camera. So I'm capturing from the built-in camera on my Thunderbolt display. It allows you to capture your screen, which you're seeing in this video, and also allows you to capture from a microphone. I've got one sitting just down here, just out of view. And then that goes onto a timeline, which you can do very basic edits to. You can also add text and different effects. And then I normally export that to a file, pull it into Final Cut Pro, and then add my intro and outro onto the video. Now moving on, next one in the dock is one password. And I use this to manage all of my logins, my serial numbers. I don't use it for credit cards, but I use it for everything else. Now I know Mac OS X Mavericks has password management now, but I've used one password for a long time. It synchronizes nicely across devices. It also allows me to use a one password reader so I can use it on Android devices as well. So I never have to remember all of my logins and it creates really strong and secure passwords. So I use this all the time. And it also works with Dropbox. So I synchronize it across devices. I've got access to it on all of my devices and I can log in very easily using those secure logins. So very well recommended. And um, the actual price of it, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is a paid for application. So do bear that in mind. There are free alternatives to this. And of course, 
Mac OS X Mavericks built-in password management is free with the system that you're using it on, but I really trust this and it works extremely well. There's browser extensions as well, so you can have automatic logins. So when you're switching between accounts, you can see here I've got uh, various um, Amazon accounts on one password, then I can switch between accounts very, very easily. And then last but not least in the dock, we've got system preferences, which I'll give you a very quick look at. This is just where you're going to access all of your uh, various preferences for Mac OS X. Very easily set out, very nice to use, very easy to go in and change settings if you need to. And Apple just did a brilliant job of Mac OS X as a, as a whole. You know I'm a big fan of the Mac OS and the hardware as well. And then last but not least, we've got a downloads folder and we've also got the trash can. So that is basically it. That is what is on my late 2013 Apple Mac Pro. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the applications I use, leave them in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also, you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.